All right. I've got Mr. Sean Wells back on the show today talking about the science of psychedelics. Sean and I both have had pretty life-changing experiences from these, and it's really cool to have Sean talking about them um, because he's a science guy. And he's also just very intuitive and insightful. And I asked him after seeing him present on this at a conference in Austin at the end of last year, I asked him if he would come on and talk to you guys about it. And he agreed to, he was also extremely generous to offer to share his uh, slide deck with us, which I'll put in the show notes. So check that out, which has like all of these supplement stacks and all of the information that he presented and had presents on some big stages all over. So appreciate him doing that. Um, if you don't know Sean, he has been on the show before, um, but I will introduce him real quick. He's one of the world's leading nutritional biochemists and experts on health optimization. He's at this bio. I don't know. It's probably more since this bio was written, but he has formulated over a thousand supplements food, beverages, cosmeceuticals, and patented 25 novel ingredients, including paraxanthine, teacrine, dynamine, dihydroberberine, and is known as the ingredientologist, the scientist of ingredients. Um, he was a chief clinical dietitian for over a decade, had a lot of authority in the keto, paleo, fasting, supplement space. Sean's just amazing, very well known in the health world. I'm very grateful to call him one of my friends. I love Sean so dearly. He has been on the Psychedelics Revealed docu-series. And yeah, he's been on all the big podcasts. Sean is just, he's so knowledgeable, but he always comes from his heart and really cares. And I really appreciate that about him. Make sure you check the show notes for that side deck. I'm going to link up his book, The Energy Formula. It is incredible. Um, his website is seanwells.com and you can find him on social media as, as at Sean Wells. And he's one of those S H A W N type of Sean's. All right, let's get all into psychedelics with Sean Wells. All right, Sean, I heard you speaking in Austin about psychedelics and you know, also that I am a grateful partaker of psychedelics. They've been a huge part of my healing path and I'm pretty nerdy about them, but I'm not as nerdy as you are. And by nerdy, I mean super freaking educated about the <laughs> mechanisms of action and how they work in the body and all of that. And I just thought it was such a cool um, viewpoint to have you, you know, Mr. Formulator, Mr. Science, digging into that. But before we dig into that, would you mind kind of sharing why you even dug into it? What psychedelics mean to you? Yeah, let me unplug for a second and think about that because that's, um, I really feel like, you know, I was known as the world's greatest formulator. I was speaking on stages. I was already on Ben Greenfield. I had already come out with cool ingredients. I was very accomplished. And I was also, I think on the edge of suicide, either directly or indirectly with just how frazzled and how hard I was pushing myself, how much I was demanding of myself, how much I had FOMO to, you know, think that this thing is the next thing. And I got to do all the things because one of them could be the next thing that hits to make me more popular, more famous, more wealthy and somehow find love for myself. I was incredibly accomplished with incredible amounts of imposter syndrome. And I also grant myself grace in, in knowing that all that drive got, to, got me to where I was, mm. but it was destroying me. Um, this idea of like, hustle and grind doesn't allow for like hustle and flow. Like there's it's, I was in like sympathetic and ultra sympathetic. I was never in parasympathetic. I was always hyper vigilant and it's a superpower to some degree. Um, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the show Homeland with, with Carrie, but like she was had this kind of mental break that she would get into where she could like be so hyper vigilant that 
you know, she could process like a hundred things and be like 10 steps ahead, but it also like almost killed her each time. Like, and I felt like that, like it was mm. just killing me the amount of mental energy that it took that everyone's out to use me, get me, but I want to help everyone. Mm. I didn't trust myself. I didn't believe in myself, didn't love myself. Um, it was exhausting. It was just completely exhausting. Never slept. Um, I was always on the road and I was dying. Uh, I was surely dying. And I decided to do my first journey with Todd and Cole Whitty, who are very important to me. And in, uh, in, they're from um, Austin area now. And um, I had heard so much from all these people that I admired, you know, the, the Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey, you know, at the time, and Tim Ferriss, and, and even Keith Norris, like, uh, all these people I knew that were like, performance men, you know, and I was like, wow, this is a cool biohack, like, maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll get more out of like, because up until that point, I always thought these are drugs, I don't want anything to do with drugs. Um, and these are for like hippies and losers. And, but then I got this message coming through that, oh, it's for biohackers now. So, um, I'm going to like somehow enhance my performance and then I can get more, even more. I can push myself even more. That's what all the biohacking was to this point, Tara, for me, I had become an expert over the last 20 years and how to abuse myself to a greater degree than anyone else. Wow. Wow. That's what the biohacking did. Mm. It, it showed me how I can push the limits and keep myself alive, how mm. I can get two hours of sleep a night, how I can out train anyone, you know, at the gym, how I can just travel to 18 countries and, you know, 10 days or whatever, how I can do all these things, how I can wow. just push myself into the ground and not die. Wow. Um, and anyway, like I went through this psilocybin experience and I was in a room with 20 people and many of which were well known to me, semi celebrity type people. And I didn't, this is one of the few times that um, I didn't announce myself or didn't say like, um, you know, like a lot of the masterminds and things I was in were kind of um, penis measuring contests, if you will, or, you know, like I'm announcing who I am and why I'm important. So, you know, I'd have to go through my whole resume and, and just to try and validate myself to feel like I semi belonged in the room. And this time I, I didn't do that. I was just quiet and, and I took the, you know, I think there was some fear in me. Like I felt you know, the trepidation of, of taking these substances, like what's going to happen? Like when I got down to the moment yeah. and um, I ended up being in a, in a cuddle puddle. I'm someone who loves, <laughs> uh, you know, my top two love languages are touch and words of affirmation. And I never really had those in my life also. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being in this cuddle puddle, which just for anyone listening that's maybe never done psychedelics, I mean, first off, these are facilitated experiences and sex has nothing to do with this stuff. Yeah. And secondarily, like when you're in these modes or places, you tend to be more in like the mind of a child. Um, and being touched, and and feeling love like it blew my mind like that people were hugging me loving me saying sweet things to me caressing me being next to me i ended up going in deeper than most everyone else because i felt so safe 
from everyone and I wanted to explore this. So I, mm. I re-upped the dose and, and people held space for me and, and people were so sweet to me and, you know, people that were doing lighter doses. It was just, it was like, you know, one of those movies where, um, you know, I was still laying there on these mattresses while like the people kind of swirled in and out of my frame, right? Like it was kind of labor blurring if you were like to speed up the photography of the whole night. So many people came in and out of my circle to just check on me and love on me. And it hit me that I can just have love. I can just be loved. Like I didn't have to earn mm. love. I thought love was something that you achieve and can be taken from you. And therefore you never keep love. It's always fleeting. It's always just out of reach. You have to reach harder. Right. And it was an epiphany for me. You could tell me these are, this is the thing, yeah. these epiphanies that you hear come out of psychedelics. They may seem obvious when you cerebralize it, right? right? Like when you put it into logic and I say, you can just have love. Cool. Got it. You know, that's what I would have said. Uh-huh. Yep. Of course. <laughs> but when you anchor it in your heart and it's a, a psychosomatic anchor, meaning yes. psycho, meaning the brain, somatic, meaning body anchor, meaning that you hold on to this and keep this and you feel it and it now shifts these folds in your brain. And now like you've, you move forward with a very different experience of life. And that's, that's what happened for me. Like everything shifted. Mm, yeah. You, you describe that really well. I've always said it feels like, especially mushrooms are like my, I've had a lot of psychedelic journeys, but those are like kind of my, my heart, you know, like I'm so grateful to mushrooms and, and I, I wait, that's how I say it. I was like, it's like they go in, and they're just like, Doop. okay, here you go. Now you see, you get it now. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. It's like, you just know you just, and it. You're right. It is a, it is a deep inner shifting that isn't, you can't talk your way there. At least I haven't been able to, I mean, maybe you could get there through the conscious mind, but something about those experiences, it's just, it, it it's in your body. It's in your body, you know? So yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And I just wanted to say like, your experience is so similar to what's going through the human collective right now is never good enough. I have to be this way for people to see me this way. And it's really cool to hear you talk about it. Cause you're like, I did it guys. I did it. I became a multimillionaire and like super respected in my industry and speaking on stages and nice cars and nice house and all the, you know, did it. And I didn't get, I didn't find what I was looking for there mm -hmm. <laughs> except for exhaustion and depression and anxiety. And yeah. Cause so, I was looking for love everywhere, but internally. Mm -hmm. I literally traveled the ends of the earth. I bought the things. I did the things. I mm -hmm. met all the celebrities. I accomplished everything there is to accomplish. I was number one in my field and I wanted to die because I was an empty, gaping fucking hole inside. Yeah. And it wasn't until that I granted myself that grace until I found love for myself until I really shifted internally did my world externally shift like it became so clear this idea of like your vibe attracts your tribe like you know I wanted all these amazing people to come in and I was wondering why all these people that were hurting me were coming in and all these mm. terrible business partners and bad love situations or what have you and it's just because that's where I was at internally. And until everything shifts internally, your external world won't change. And of course, it helps to shift your external world as much as you can and get away from trauma, surround yourself with positive people to, uh, to mentor you, to guide you, all those kinds of things. But you really need to be doing the work. And, 
And before we jump into psychedelics, I will say like that is incredibly important. I think a lot of people have this impression that, you know, it's about this, uh, this epiphany experience and that's what happens. Like you get some major epiphany on psychedelics and there are those moments, but if you don't do the work thereafter, if you don't, if you don't do the integration, I've found it can be worse because you've suppressed the truth prior to your experience. Now the truth is so evident and you have a choice of either to be in integrity or not. Mm -hmm. It's super clear. Mm -hmm. There's no more suppression. There's no more hiding from it. This epiphany said, here it is. <laughs> what are you going to do? And yeah. if you just go back to your life and, and do nothing about it, I've found like that running from your integrity, running from your truth is even more punishing. Yeah. So it's very important to take the time to mm -hmm. do that integration work and not just it's one thing like in particular with ayahuasca that I see a lot. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. think of that as like the big one. And like, you yeah. just get like the big epiphany and you walk away and you're so different and everything's changed and your life's perfect. And <laughs> no, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think that's the case. And, and I do see now, like there's value to these big experiences without a doubt. Um, but there's also just as much value to like micro dosing or, you know, even doing these psychedelic experiences without psychedelics, like you can do, um, you know, breath work. Um, mm -hmm. do, totally. Yeah, there, there's a number of scenarios where you can, you know, get there without uh, mm -hmm. without the, the substances. And I do like that the substances are the psychosomatic anchors can be the training wheels. Mm -hmm. Um. Another thing I want to throw out there, like since it's kind of rolling, but uh, here's another lesson that I, I think is quite profound and, and I really want people to listen to is I, when I first went into these experiences, they were like, oh, you're a big guy. You need, uh, you know, I'm whatever, 6'2", 6'3", 225. And they're like, okay, so you need like five grams. And, you know, this girl... It's, you know, 100 pounds or 120 pounds. She needs three grams or, you know, whatever it is. These doses have nothing to do with body size. They have everything to do with your nervous system. Hmm. My nervous system was perpetually in sympathetic state. This fight, flight, or freeze. I was ultra vigilant all the time. And... I've found that as I have gone through these experiences and done more journeys and been able to get to where my heart is more open, my body is more relaxed, my doses have lowered and lowered and lowered and lowered. Wow. And so much so that I remember being in Nosara, which is in Costa Rica, a very beautiful place. And I was very unplugged from all the electronics. I was going to bed with the sunset, getting up with the sunrise, walking on the beach, like doing breath work, all this stuff. And I did one gram and I thought it was going to be like a mini dose. And I had like a full blown psychedelic journey with all the visions and colors. And it was like crazy. Like, mm. um, wow. so it's very much about your nervous system. So if you're someone that's facilitating, if you're or you're being facilitated, um, look for ways to calm the nervous system prior to going into these experiences. A lot of times there'll be MDMA or MDA as a heart opener. I think MDMA is a little harsh on on the heart. So like on, mm -hmm. uh, it's very much an amphetamine stimulant. Um, I, I don't feel like that's the best one to choose, but I know it gets used a lot, but like MDA is a little bit more mild sassafras, you know, there's, but you can also just do breath work and something like called TRE, which is 
um, trauma release exercises and um, you can do intention setting in the circle and, and, and get into like collective coherence, mm -hmm. which can really help calm the nervous system. Because a lot of times coming in, people will feel fear about being seen, right? I mean, you know this, like there is an intense, the people I brought in for the first time are like freaking out, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. especially like I I can remember several times I've, dri I've driven people from, you know, picked them up at the airport in Dallas and drove them down to Austin. It's like three, four hour drive. And they like were losing their minds on this entire trip. Uh, it's normal to feel nervous for sure. It's yeah, a lot of unknown. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're going to be seen and that's a real fear. But I would say like there's this um, Shirley MacLaine rule about 20, 40, 60 rule about, you know, you're, you know, at 20, you think everyone cares about what you're doing. And at 40, you realize essentially that they're not that interested. And at 60, you realize no one was even watching at all. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, like. Exactly. <laughs> people are caught up in their own shit and they're yeah. all worried about their own things too. Yeah. And, um, and people ultimately that will be there will end up being your supporters because it's inspiring to watch people go through their transformations. Definitely. And so the last thing I'll say is like, another thing I've learned is that the journey starts when you commit to it. It's not just in the psychedelic experience, like mm -hmm. stuff starts, like the preparation starts happening. Things will move from the unconscious to the subconscious to the conscious mind mm -hmm. while you commit. Because mm -hmm. now you're like, all these things start coming up and totally. themselves and the journey starts when you commit. Oh, yeah. So, you know, get ready because in those weeks prior, it's already happening. Okay. Yes. I, that is a hundred percent true for me. And now before we switch over kind of into some of the fun sciencey things, I just have to say, if anyone's new to my podcast, if you're not, if you're not new, you've heard me talk about psychedelics before. If you're new, you might be like, what is going on? Aren't those things illegal? What are they talking about? And so, mm. um, just want to say, yeah, a lot of these things are still illegal. Um, there are a lot of people using them and there are a lot of people trained to use them. And I just have to say, if you're wanting to experience something like this one, don't hit up me and Sean and ask how, how, if we can introduce you to somebody, sorry, just, I'm not doing that. So I get hit up a lot about this stuff when I start talking about it. So, um, I will say, um, also get educated before you ever go into something like this. <clears throat> I really don't recommend the whole, my friend has some mushrooms and we're going camping. Yeah. Um, at, like, that might be a good experience for you, but I would put it more on the side of it's probably not <laughs> yeah. more, you know, more like 60, 40, because it's really important to do these things with somebody who is trained to facilitate, or at least has like been doing them for a long time. And they really have put like their heart, mind, soul into educating themselves about, but there's, there's more than that. It's like maybe your friends on antidepressants, or maybe they have a bunch of PTSD you don't know about, or predispositions for mental health issues, and they might freak out and you don't know how to handle it. And so, you know, traumas that they never told anybody about that might come to the surface and you're not trained to help them through that process, it can traumatize them even more. And so I just even kind more. of put some of these things out there because it is important to find somebody like, like Sean did that knows what they're doing, that can hold that space, that can carry you through the energy. It is a game changer. And the last thing I'll say is, um, I mean, I went pretty deep in this world for a long time and read a lot of books. And one of my favorites was, um, Stan Groff's book, LSD doorway to the numinous. And he was just, this was, he was one of the researchers of, of the psychedelics. He, I think he had like seven or 800 test subjects at the time of writing this book um, before everything got illegalized. But he was talking about, you know, all the different same, the same patterns, this many people saw jaguars and this many people saw eagles. And like, it was really fascinating, but over all of his um, uh, studies, I guess, over the years, he, he's like the most important thing is the set and setting, you know, and I really think Stan Groff really, he's the guy who created holotropic breathwork, by the way, but he, he really pushed that. It's like, and so that means your mindset 
and your actual physical setting. So sometimes people take mushrooms and they like go to some tourist area and go to restaurants. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like, no, I mean, to each their own, but that sounds horrible. You're not going to get what Sean and I are talking about when you're at Joe's crab shack on mushrooms. You know, you're not, it's not going to happen. You're going to get paranoid and scared. Most likely you might laugh a lot, but there's so much more to these. And so just wanted to establish that and kind of refer you guys to maybe maps.org M A P as in Paul S.org is a great resource for learning all about plant medicines and psychedelics. Okay. That's my official little podcast host coach <laughs> has to say. Oh, well said. All well right. said. I, I do find that there is uh, a potential to have greater trauma when essentially you're cracked open, right? Like your operating system is exposed. Your default mode network is down. And that means like the ego and, and all that's associated with it is like powered off. The ego is the great um, protector and deflector and reframer. And it's powerful. The ego gets a bad rap a lot of the time, but it's powerful. Like yeah. it, it's how those of us that are successful, we're delusional. <laughs> we <laughs> lie to ourselves constantly. And it's through this reframing of yeah. the ego that we do that, that like mm-hmm. we create this vision of where we're going to be and, yeah, you know, that we manifest and all that stuff. That's like, we're, we're in like fucking la la land lying <laughs> to ourselves all the time so that's like the the ego um you know working for us but the ego can also certainly work against us and this is why you see um you know psychotherapy not really be that effective because the ego is constantly reframing and you know you're trying to be guided by this psychotherapist and your ego's like nope 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 mm-hmm. nope Nope. Mm -hmm. And it's like deflecting and moving around and squirming. And, and it's only when you combine that psychotherapy, this is why facilitated psychedelic work is really important. When you, 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 when you do both, as you're talking about that, the default mode network is off, the ego is suppressed and you're in a neuroplastic state, which means your brain is malleable and things can be rewritten in that operating system. And you can have these new psychosomatic anchors in in heart and brain um, that you can move forward with. Um, And neurotransmitters are, are, are flooding in and there's just a massive shift that you can, when done safely, rewrite the code in a good way. Um, The problem is like when you're in an unsafe environment and unsafe environment can mean this person gives off an energy that is unsafe for you. Let's say if you've been through uh, a number of, if you're molested, if you're raped or whatever, just a male facilitator the guy could be the greatest guy in the world right could have the greatest intentions in the world but you just don't feel safe in this environment because of your conditioning doesn't mean he's a bad guy doesn't mean you're wrong like you need to do whatever feels safe for you so Mm -hmm. that you can lean in yes safety is numero uno numero uno (laughs) yeah exactly and when you lean in that's when you go through like these massive changes because Going back to what I was talking through with the nervous system, when you're staying more in sympathetic nervous system, when you're more fight, flight, or freeze, you're overpowering these substances. Mm -hmm. So imagine if for people that haven't done psychedelics, that if you were exhausted and your baby screams or you're drunk and some guy falls in front of you and splits his head open, boom, I'm awake. Or, you know, if you're uh, a guy and, um, you know, you hear like a, you know, the the door break open downstairs and like you, you know, you're exhausted and sleeping. Boom. All these things are flooding in cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, 
you're awake, you're ready, you're sharp, mm-hmm. right? This is survival. And so this is happening even in these environments. You're overpowering these substances. And it's only when you can say, I'm safe, I'm held, I'm nurtured, I'm loved, mm-hmm. I'm being watched over, I have a sitter. If I get cold, I have a blanket. If I get thirsty, I have water. If I cry, they can walk through it with me. All these things. Then you're leaning in and that's when you're allowing. There has to be this element of surrender for these Mm -hmm. these substances to work. And if you don't surrender, then it's not going to work. Haven't you seen that with men a lot in, mm-hmm. in the psychedelic world is like men I found it's yeah. really hard for them to feel safe enough. They have to have, a, so men like definitely recommend choosing a facilitator that you're like, they got me. Like, I feel completely safe here because I've noticed like a lot of men kind of have that. Like I have to be, if some, if something goes wrong, I have to save everybody you know like it's a very i don't biological programming who knows but a lot of men got that going on or you know i've seen moms even or couples like they don't feel safe leaving their kids with anyone and so they're like worried about their kids with their sister or whoever and they can't surrender all the way so like those things do matter to have a positive experience is like making sure you're like everything is okay i don't have to worry about anybody i'm I'm not in charge of anything so you can fully let go Right. Um, and that's where a great facilitator will mm-hmm. do an intake prior to bringing you on. They'll understand where you're at, um, you know, in terms of your psychological history and traumas. They'll understand where you're at physically. Um, you know, they're doing a, a really good intake and then talking to you on the phone and, and walking through everything before you even arrive. Mm-hmm. Um, they're setting the stage for you to be safe and they'll have you know, people that are facilitators that are highly trained, but they'll also have sitters that can, mm-hmm. you know, take care of your more simple needs of mm-hmm. just, you know, if you need someone to hug, mm-hmm. if you need um, tissues, if you need a blanket, if you need some water, if you need help going to the bathroom, mm-hmm. you know, you need a hand going outside so you can just sit with nature. Like they're there to do that too. Mm-hmm. And so all of that, when you work with really experienced people is important. And look, I'm going to tell you right now, this is another thing. I know people like think about the price and whatever, and it's like, they're like, oh, I want to do like this $500 journey or whatever it is. Um, If it costs $10,000, I don't know what your, what your financial situation is, whatever whoever listening, but whatever makes you feel safe, secure, supported, you know, if if you need to be out in nature at a mansion with like the best food and chef Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever it is, like, yeah, spend it, do it. Cause there's Mm -hmm. nothing that could be more powerful for change in your life than one of these experiences. So I would, I would plead with you that you don't really get caught up in the numbers and focus on the energetics of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well said. All right. Let's talk about mushrooms since we've been talking about mushrooms, mm-hmm. you know, we, you talked a little bit about default mode network and uh, mm-hmm. neuroplasticity, but, you know, could you share with the audience a little bit about, about like how mushrooms work, what you've learned about what they do in the body? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people go first to this like serotonergic um, 5-HT2A receptor as the main mechanism of action of which that's true. There's a 5-HT1A as well. There's um, what's interesting with mushrooms is like it's not serotonin is one aspect but it's one of many like, and the serotonin theory, if if you've heard me talk before is a highly flawed theory of serotonin, just being like the, the main mechanism for depression. 
what we see with depression, um, also called major depressive disorder, is that all neurotransmitters are down, or really the term is depressed when they're down. So all the neurotransmitters, meaning acetylcholine, glutamate, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, histamine, GABA, glycine, endorphins, like they're all down. Mm. And this makes sense from the aspect of when you're traumatized, you're trying to reduce the amount of what you're feeling. Mm. And so certain areas of your brain will go dark and neurotransmitter release will go down. And, you know, you can actually see areas of the brain that reflect insults, like physical insults. Like, for example, like if you're, you know, hit in the head with a, a baseball or you were in a car accident or, uh, you know, whatever it was, these actually look similar on scans when you're traumatized, like uh, emotionally. So, you know, these areas of your brain are shutting down to have you feel less. And that works for a while. But obviously, long term, this is counterproductive because now you're in a mode where you're feeling very little, experiencing very little, and that's going to affect the uh, trajectory of your life. Mm -hmm. So with mushrooms, um, they're also they affect all these neurotransmitters. They affect um, the glutaminergic um, receptors like NMDA and AMPA. They affect um, uh, dopamine receptors, D1, D2. Like uh, all of these things get affected with mushrooms. So it can bring everything back online. It's like, you know, when you call the, <laughs> like Dell uh, customer service and they're like, uh, Hey dummy, um, have you turned it on and off? Yeah. And you're like, Oh really? And then you're like, and then you do it and then it fixes everything. And you're like, damn it. <laughs> you waited like 60 <laughs> minutes on hold. You're all angry at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, that's so stupid. And then it works. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that is kind of what you're doing here is you're kind of rebooting the system. And then these mushrooms with the neuroplasticity, with the default ne mode network suppressed, um, you are allowing uh, direct access to the operating system. And so you can think about like on your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever, that when you get these updates every so often, right, that you go from like the 6.5 to 7, you know, the, the versions of the operating system, you can get these upgrades. Now, as we were just talking about, if you put yourself in an unsafe situation, you're on MDMA, you're on psilocybin, now you can have a downgrade in your operating system. So be very careful. This is, you're wide open, you're cracked open. Trauma is, you're taking in more data, okay? Like your brain, there's actually uh, not only more neuroplasticity, but you're, uh, because all these neurotransmitters are heightened, there's more blood flow going to the brain with nitric oxide. There is, more sensation happening in the body. Touch feels more intense. You're seeing more colors. Your retinas can like be kind of, uh, your pupils uh, in particular can be kind of blown out. People might see that. You're taking in more light. You're taking in more data. You can hear conversations on the other side of the house. Some people even talk about, you know, experiences beyond the physical that are quite intense as well. So, your senses are incredibly heightened. This means the chance for trauma could be higher remarkably. And to iron that in with a neuroplastic brain, to have the ego turned off so you can't reframe it, this is not a good situation to be unsafe using these substances. So I want to be very clear. This is why it's important to pay the extra money to do the due diligence and vet whoever you're going to be working mm -hmm. with 
and say, I feel safe. These people are great. Um, I feel safe with who's going to be there and the environments I'm in, as you stated, set and setting. Mm -hmm. And it all feels good so that you can explore. The more that you're in that um, parasympathetic, the more you feel safe, the more you lean in. I tend to think about it like, you know, there's a deep sea diver, right? That has the the oxygen hose, right? Or the, the, you know, same in space, like when these guys are kind of like out there, you know, floating from the uh, space shuttle or space station and, and they have the this attached hose, it's their, their lifeline, literally, right? But like, the more you can lean in, the safer you are, like the further you can get from that mothership, and the further you can explore yeah. and the further you can go into the darkness, go into the shadow and go find these things. And that's a beautiful experience. And that all comes with, with safety and, and being able to lean in and being in that parasympathetic. So uh, otherwise it'll be like a very short line and you'll just rush back because of fear and you'll never really lean in. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I, you're making me think of uh you know how they discover, what is it? The atom is like mostly empty space. Is it, yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like, I mean, that's sometimes how it is in those journeys. Like you're going into the void, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're going way into the void and, and you're right. It can be uncomfortable. You never, I mean, especially the first time you've never experienced anything like that in your life. And the more and more you're, that's a great analogy. And we're both analogy. We both love analogies. I've noticed. <laughs> we're like, well, how can I, how I can love I be to this teach. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, but it is, you get more and more comfortable with it over time. And the last thing I'll just add is, um, it's interesting. You're talking about, you know, that opening up because, um, and the, and the protection that our brain does. Cause I think anyone who's done we'll say just mushrooms, just psilocybin, you know, and they've had a profound life-changing experience from it. I feel like it would be safe to say, you know, we, we're starting to see all this research and data of like, it helps with depression and it lasts longer than other things. And yeah. to me, that just feels like in my personal experience, because it helped me address the, the, the issue that was causing me to suppress my brain, the trauma that was unhealed. It was like, okay, well, let's take a look at that one. We've created this safe space now where your, you know, amygdala is not going to freak out. We've, we've opened things up a little bit. All right, let's take a look at how you're looking at that, you know, and I just see it from this whole new angle that I never saw it from before that allows me to not I don't even see it the same anymore. Right. So I had a lot of childhood trauma and it's like through these experiences, it's not that I'm just like, for me personally, it's it's like, I'm okay with that now. It's like, I don't see it the same way I used to. And that's why I feel like my brain doesn't go on these like suppression, like, like anger, reactive mind, so we protect myself because I just don't see it the same way anymore. You know, and that has been for me personally, super beneficial from these experiences. Yeah. If you could link this in your show notes, I mean, oh, one, I can course. send you my actual slide deck if you want. Oh, I'll that would be awesome. So people could go super deep. We can talk about, I do supplement stacks in there. Yeah, that would be super awesome. Um, but I would love, I believe, this is what I have come to believe. and. I hope this isn't in conflict with anyone listening religiously. And I'll say this about triggers. If this triggers you, one of the things I've learned in journeys is triggers is your own shit coming back in your face. (laughs) Yeah. Triggers are telling you everything. Triggers are not about this person next to you that like won't stop laughing or this person that won't stop screaming or that's so irritating. Like a, it's you, it's you, it's you. <laughs> you need to explore that um, and take responsibility for your life. And let me ask you where else that's showing up in your mm. life that you're not taking responsibility and you're blaming it on someone else. Mm-hmm. Mic drop. But uh, <laughs> it's called the egg. And okay. it is one of the most powerful, powerful stories like you will ever witness. It's on <laughs> YouTube. It's only about eight minutes long. It is about multiple lives 
Mm. Um, so that, you know, may throw people off, but I just watch it, just watch it. Yay. And you know what yeah. you think. Um, but I believe I've come to believe that we have chosen this life so that we could learn the lessons. When you believe that, whether you believe this to be true or not, this is now what I believe. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their own path, their own journey. So it's fine if you believe something different. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I could be completely wrong. <laughs> um, but when you choose your life, well, that shifts everything about these traumas and being a victim and whatever. And it shifts out of that entirely to say, I wanted to learn these lessons and this is one step and you know, the next life will be another step. And so that's been powerful for me to, to put that frame in there and maybe that's mm -hmm. an ego reframe and maybe I'm lying to myself and all that. I feel the same way if but, it helps. So I'm, we're the only two on this call right now. So <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you say that because I was uh, just hanging out with my dad. We're recording this like shortly after Father's Day. And I was just hanging out with my dad a couple nights ago. And I was just reflecting back on my childhood. And my, my, I love my parents so deeply. And plant medicines actually really helped improve that relationship because it was a, a struggle bus for a long time. But I love them so deeply. But, you know, they have difficult person. <laughs> there, there, there was a lot of difficulty in my childhood. I'll put it that way. And, you know, I was hanging out with my dad and I was just having such a good time. And I was thinking, reflecting back on my childhood. And I, I just had this moment where I, I just laughed to myself because I thought I just it was all in an instant. But it was like I could see myself choosing to come to my mom, my dad. It was a very unhealthy situation, but it was in the United States in 1982. And I, I, I heard myself go, I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take it, you know? And so I've had little moments like that too, where I'm just like, I don't know. I just feel, um, actually my whole life I've been that way. My dad told me that that night. He's like, you, he's like, I wouldn't say you had like ADHD, <laughs> you were just really excited about life all the time. You were excited about everything, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and I feel that way. I, um, I I'll do this earth life thing like a million more times. I always, I love, I love it. It's, it's hard. I've been through my fair share of trauma and I haven't had clinical depression. So not to, uh, uh what's the word? Like uh, that might be annoying to hear if you're clinically depressed or going through deep trauma um, right now. Um, but I'm not in that state right now. And if I have to look back over the whole course of this life, I'm really grateful for the experience. I'm grateful for the highs, the lows, the learning, the depth, the knowledge, the wisdom, you know, and definitely didn't feel like that when I was in my low lows because I have been in low lows. I have had those feelings of maybe I can just cross this car off the other side of this and then I don't have to deal with this crap anymore. So I've had moments like that. It's not like I, it's all been butterflies and roses, you know, right. but, um, it's definitely, if you look back at it all, it, and, and I do think psychedelics help give you some of these perspectives of more like a zoom out perspective yeah. on life. I'm so grateful for all of it. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a God's eye view. Um, sometimes, especially like when you get into like the the higher doses of some of these substances, or learn how to lean in quite heavily. Especially if you get into like DMT, especially five meo DMT, or I have done crazy high doses of ketamine, and and it's so mm -hmm. dissociative that it's very much like a five meo experience. Really? Um, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. like the clinical, even the clinical use. Um, it would, and I'm not recommending this. This is essentially I, that sounds horrible to me. I don't yeah, yeah. mean it's not personally my jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I've explored everything in a variety of, of ways, and I, I feel like that's part of my desire to understand the biochemistry and all these things, but mm -hmm. also like. You know, if I'm going to educate on these things, I kind of mm -hmm. uh, take these paths, but let's take a minute for that. Can yeah. we? Okay. Yeah. Cause some people are probably like, what's five MEO? What's DMT? What is ketamine? Yeah. You know, I mean, probably people have heard of ketamine now, which is funny to me. Cause I'm like, I, I've had a lot of journeys. I'm like, ketamine is like, 
for me personally, like my least favorite, and that's the one that's available to people. Oh no. But for some people, I know it has been, you know, extremely powerful and has benefits, but Mm -hmm. can we just do maybe like a, a list of, I don't know, the different psychedelics, plant medicines, and just like a quick, uh, whatever you have to say about each one. Yeah. Ketamine is, is like you're saying is available on a clinical, um, aspect so it is very accessible it is uh, highly dissociative um and also at higher doses is used as a clinical anesthetic so used as anesthesia um you can experience what's called a k-hole like that is actually where i was putting myself like where i couldn't move my arms and legs and all these things but i would argue i'm not I'm not recommending people do this, but if you were safe, um, it's not a quote unquote K hole. Like, you know, again, it gets used as anesthesia. So it can be, it can be very powerful where, where dissociative is the most powerful I have found is with PTSD. Um, a number of these substances have dissociative, uh, properties, but I would say, it's where ketamine excels the most. Okay. And so for those that have PTSD, there is an element of you wearing your trauma backpack where you're putting your backpack on and it's very much a part of you. And you wonder who you'd be without this backpack. It scares you to take off the backpack because it is who you are. It's what you deserve. It's who am I without this? Like, oh my God, I need this. Like, Mm. so when you dissociate, it's like putting the backpack down and putting it on the other side of the room. And then you get to, again, psychosomatic anchor, you get to feel, feel in your nervous system, what it's like to be Sean in this case, or, wow. or, or you like where you, you're not wearing the backpack. Hmm. Wow. And That's so cool. that is a powerful experience yeah. where it's like, oh, wow. Like I'm still okay. Like I'm wait. Hmm. I'm actually okay without it on. And then you're like, Hey, I don't need that backpack. Okay. With PTSD, it it appears to be a very powerful tool. It's also powerful in that it lasts about one hour. Um, You know, so it's, it's literally kind of like a lunch break. Yeah. It's way more doable. You will. Um, And it's not quite as, uh, intense for that reason. It's very clean kind of in and out of the body. Um, Mm. whereas, you know, there can be more of a hangover on some of these substances and, you know, some of these substances like ayahuasca or ibogaine or, you know, whatever can be quite involved can be a lot, um, can be multiple days, you know, so Mm -hmm. it's very different experience. So I'm thankful that it's accessible um mm-hmm. for people and and hopefully they're in environments where it is safe that still matters tremendously that you're doing it with a psychotherapist someone supporting your integration i don't like some of the ketamine clinics have no integration i do not like that at all um so i think that's important um dmt is that substance that's released in your brain when you when you're you know dying and you, know, you see the light and the tunnel and you know all the things and you know it floods your body and you do feel safe and you feel relaxed as you're quote unquote transitioning and um and so that's powerful to have access to these things um and have very incredible experiences that are Mm -hmm. similar to, to death or dying. Uh, What I've found and five MEO is kind of like the weaponized version of DMT, where it's very potent, very short acting about 15 minutes. um, And you really just like, go see God, you're just completely out of your body. And it is like, you have a a really sometimes mind blowing experience. Um, And when I've done 5-MeO or Bufo is kind of the, the natural version of 5-MeO. Uh, but I would encourage those to do, even though I like the idea of natural things, they do, uh, these frogs are endangered. They're stressing mm. the frogs to get this Bufo. I would recommend that you do mm. a 5-MeO. Um, and certainly, again, 
this one, because it has such a spiritual nature to it, I would have people that know what they're doing spiritually. Mm. It's, I don't normally say that. Um, mm. I've normally been the science guy, mm-hmm. and whatever, and all about mm-hmm. just psychotherapy. And mm-hmm. that's how I feel about ayahuasca. Say, I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't just make that yourself. And no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> anything, anything, uh, yeah, anything DMT related. Yes. Um, it's spiritual in nature. And, and if you don't believe that, you will after. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like invite things in on this discussion, but, um, but just be careful, just do it with the mm-hmm. right energies, make sure you're around people that are highly trained in, mm-hmm. and walking in these spiritual worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's very important. But for me, when I've done even holotropic breathing, um, yeah. I've had DMT release, or, you know, especially five MEO. You know, I saw the white lights. I saw like the refractory rainbow in the white lights. Like, I'm like, wow, this is like heaven. And, and then, and then I fell into like the inky black of everything of space of the universe of like, I was a part of it all. I knew that Mm, like, mm. there was something bigger than me. And this is where the egg comes in, by the way, it's not just multiple lives. It's like, you are all the lives. You are part of everything. Mm. Mm. Um, so again, watch that very short video on YouTube. Nice. Um, but your your clarity around being connected to you and I are one being. I am this tree. The tree is me. Like <laughs> like there's a powerful message that comes through there that you know you're you're too caught up in your own stuff and it's not all about you and. Mm-hmm. There is reflections of you everywhere. There's pieces of you everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, that's just such a beautiful experience. And I feel so blessed that like I've gotten to experience the lesson of dying without mm-hmm. having to die. Yeah. I, there's a show on Netflix. It's some series about people near death experiences. Yeah. And I just watched like the first episode or first two. And it was so hilarious because these people were like talking about how like, they're like, I don't know how I, I need to find people who know what I know. And like, I can't even relate to the people in my town anymore. Like, and yeah. I was like, oh girl, like you just the whole psychedelic <laughs> community, things like this. Like we, we, it really just reminded me everything they were saying. I'm like, well, it makes sense. You release a bunch of DMT. And I mean, for me on DMT, I was telepathically communicating with other beings in some other yeah. place, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you definitely uh, experience something that's out of our normal day-to-day reality. And that profoundness, the greatness of that and the connectedness, like I know what you're saying, because I've been in those same experiences where I literally was the fabric of all that is. That's all I was. There was no thinking. There was no nothing except just isness. And I've been in those spaces. And when you're in those spaces, like you can't help but have a more um, integrated look at the world around you and more appreciation, more connectedness, more desire to um, play well as a part of the whole. Um, I heard Zach Bush saying the other day, like cancer happens when one cell kind of goes rogue and isolates itself. Right. And I think about that with us sometimes it's like, are we playing nice? Are we playing, you know, us as, cause I see us as human beings as like cells on the body of mother earth. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm like, are we playing nice with the whole, are we play? we, you know, cause otherwise we're becoming like cancer. So like, let's, but in these experiences, they really do help us remember that um, amongst a million other things. So anyway, I know we're out of time, so I will keep not keep blabbing, even though I love blabbing about this. Um, no, no, no. Uh, two <laughs> other quick things. So okay, okay. one interesting blend that's been coming up that I've been exploring is something called ma. And so this is mushrooms and ayahuasca and like, really like, um, mm-hmm. it's DMT. And s- so psilocybin converts to psilocin. So it's like, these are the actives and if done in the right way with the right facilitator that's experienced very, very interesting combination. That's true. I've had that um, with an amazing facilitator and it was beautiful and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of the bright colors, but also the creativity, the change, the calmness. Um, 
So uh, that's a cool one. And another one that we haven't mentioned that I'm a huge fan of, like maybe it's even my favorite is mm. Wachuma, also called San Pedro. Uh, it is a cactus. Um, wow, your favorite. Is kind of in, peyote is kind of endangered. So I'd say look for uh, Wachuma. Uh, that's really the indigenous name for it. San Pedro is kind of the catholicism name for it yeah. um but that active is mescaline and what i've found this is just my theory around this and this is getting super nerdy but there's something called the super chiasmatic nucleus like that's kind of your master clock in your body and what i've experienced on this as someone that's a driven person that's felt the pressure of the clock my whole life um, and been entrained to the clock and meetings and am I on time and I have to be here and right. where else do I have to be next? And mescaline, you're so present, like mm. so in the here and now. Um, so where it's really powerful with, with Ta and Cole and their experiences, they would do MDA is the heart opener sassafras. They would do ceremonial cacao with the psilocybin, uh, which allows you to lower your doses because you had the heart opener. The next day would be a Wachuma day. Nice. And that allows you to stay in the parasympathetic, stay in the here and now and be super present with like a sun sunset or a conversation like it's mm. so relaxed you're so present that it just keeps you grounded um keeps your nervous system in a in a good place allows you to process to integrate it's not a good thing to go this is some more advice if you know you are doing a journey and don't do them too often just make do it right and mm -hmm. Don't leave and just go back into your life. <laughs> yeah. Give yourself a day, two days, three days, whatever you can on the mm -hmm. other side of this journey to journal, to rest, to do self-care, to get a massage, to right. like sit with yourself. Um, and the backing up, like before I even went into a journey, if I was to give advice now, is get attuned to going internal mm. so much of our society the way we are now is to stay distracted on oh, our right. cell phones on our tv on our pads and tablets and driving mm -hmm. and all the things we have to do and you know our work and we're constantly distracted we never want to go internally like i remember going into a float tank and feeling like that was my personal hell <laughs> And, you know, yeah. it's like if you can sit with yourself and get better with that, like the, you'll get far more out of these experiences. True. Like you can do, you know, float tank, journaling, gratitude, you know, breath work, prayer, meditation, you know, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Psychotherapy, like mm -hmm. if you can just turn inwards and be totally. okay with that, like that's going to be so helpful. Yeah. Such good advice. And the last thing I'll add is like, I've learned is don't stress yourself out over the integration. I see people get so hyper fixated on like, okay, somebody has to write everything down and like, hold on, I got to refer to what happened. Oh yeah. That and it's just like this super kind of like, I, if you'll just release, just like you have to surrender to go in, just release the things will come in as they need to. Right. So if it's like, okay, I just realized that I have really been looking at that in a weird way. It, I don't find it fruitful to get in this hyper. I got to fix it now. It's just, just relax. And as it comes through, like allow the energetic um, teachings to come through, but there will be moments. It's just like, if you're changing your eating habits or whatever, it's like, Okay, here it is. Here we are. I kind of thought about this and I had a here I am. You know, what am I going to do? That's what it kind of feels like when I'm actually integrating. It's like, dude, Mother Ayahuasca told you to not be messing around with those kind of guys. And you, mm -hmm. you, you're feeling like you want to mess it. No, what? What is it? What you going to do? Does he feel like an asshole or not? Okay, not really an asshole, but you know what I'm saying. And it's like, those are the moments of like, 
old patterns or new patterns? What's she going to do? That's to me how integration happens is like, yeah, sometimes there's these huge breakthroughs and it's like, okay, I have to start this business. But a lot of the time it's really just for me, like, you see how you're a little off on that energy, but it helps put me in this healthy one. And so when I start to integrate back into real life and I want to sink back into that old energy, that's not serving me, that's where integration happens, you know? And so that just kind of comes on like a play by play basis, but man, if you'll integrate what you were told and you, you don't sink back into that and you choose this new, then that becomes the new normal. And you're like, so like, proud of yourself, happy for yourself in those moments. So that's just my experience with integration. I'll add, but I know we're over time. So we better go. Any last words, Sean? Uh, I will send you a link for my deck that goes through all the science, the statistics, the, you know, someone like really challenges you on these things. It has everything that you could mm. possibly need. It has stacks for before, during, after journeys for stacks with supplements around microdosing, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. That's super you know, cool of that. you. And definitely I would love if, you know, you and your, your followers, your listeners uh, check out the egg. Cause I think it's, it's profound. Mm. Like it's mm. really profound. So. Okay. Um, and then, oh, follow me yeah. <laughs> at Sean Wells, S H A W N W E L L S. So, um, you know, and we, and Instagram and all that. Yes. And, uh, the energy formula, you guys yep. have hopefully heard us talk about that before, but make sure you check out his book, the energy formula. Cause it's just like, it's so practical. It's so cool the way you did it too. It's like, it's, it's, it's one of those books that you'll be like, Oh, this is a cool freaking book. Like it has such practical information. Just the whole style of it is really great and like amazing information. So check that out too. We'll link that up. Seanwells.com. Sean Wells on all the social media things. Uh, anything else, Sean, any last little, I just, I love you. Thank you for a chance yeah. to, um, to have a conversation and, and educate. I love to do this. Um, Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing from your heart. You got it. All right. Thanks.